this is our Manage Contacts and Clients screen. From here you can enter new information as the screen is ready to do now when you first come into it about a client or a contact in the system. Contacts being if you have our calendar and contact management module. To enter a new client here I can simply fill in the information. I can look up existing clients either by name, by ID, or phone number. Also I can select whether I want to look up all accounts including inactive, just active clients, just active contacts are all active contacts and clients. There are also some search methods here. I can hit search and now here I can actually do a global search if you will. I can hit filter by using wildcards here. I'm going to do everybody with the word all in their name. And there's all my clients that have ALL in their name actually. If I want to go to all rise robes and tassels just click the binoculars, close this screen and here's their information on my contact management screen. I'm going to leave this up so we've got some examples of information here while I'm talking about the different fields. This is a client. The 10 character ID here can be up to 10 characters. Alphanumeric does need to be unique for each client or contact. Here is the group ID and we'll talk about the group ID and what it does for you a little bit more in just a minute here but that allows you basically to tie clients together whether that be by some sort of family relationship, business relationship, whatever you want to use for a basis for that relationship. A lot of our reports in the system you can filter by the group ID. This is the sort name. In the case of an individual here put last name comma first name. Uh, in the case of a business as I have here just put the business name. Uh, the reason for that is so that it will sort properly on the internal reports for the system. Now the next line is name on bills and really that just needs to be filled in if what you have in the sort name is not the way you want it to appear on invoices and statements for the client. Spouse name if you need to keep track of that. Contact person for the client. Uh, here's some email and website information, primary email address, email invoices too if you're going to be emailing invoices. Also, there is a spot to put their website in so you can keep track of that. Uh, right from here, you can hit the send email button and send emails to the client either using the built-in uh, email facilities in our contact management portion of our program or using Outlook. Uh, the staffing here has the partner or owner of the account, if you will. Uh, the originating partner is if you've got a rainmaker in the firm you need to keep track of who actually brought the business into the firm. Primary staff assigned. Uh, now too you can drill down on staff assignments here and get into further staff assignments for the client as well. Uh, and there's some additional filtering you can do here. Uh, client or business type, uh, satisfaction level, uh, priority status of the client, uh, service or product. Now all of these drop downs that you see here you can edit those uh, that was covered in the lookup tab of the company setup screen. Uh, referral source, refer by that type thing if you want to keep track of that for marketing purposes. Uh, there are some dates here. Uh, start date of doing business, the date this will automatically be filled in with the date that were set up in the system. End date, uh, date of birth for the client and the spouse, anniversary date, incorporated date. Uh, now too you can run listings of your clients based on this data information that you have here uh, as well as you can generate mailing labels. Uh, if you have our contact management module you can actually uh, do email blast based on the dates that you have here. Service charge here whether or not they're subject to service charge. Also you can have a monthly rate for the service charge if you charge other than your normal monthly rate for this class. So this overrides your normal rate. Uh, Slip entry work code if you want uh, time entries for this client to have a default work code automatically come up if you do primarily one type of work for the client. It's real handy. Uh, there is information on the right hand side here. Right now I've got phone info selected. I can have multiple phone numbers. Uh, I can tag the main phone number. Also there's a short comment for each phone number so you can tag whose extension that is that type of thing. Uh, go to address info. And now here I've got their different address information. Again, I can have multiple addresses here. Uh, at least one needs to be tagged as the bill to address for a client so that you can generate invoices. There is the ability to clone address and phone information from an existing client if you're setting up a new client. There is also here a quick overview, if you will, of account balances. 
And now, too, any of the items here that are underlined, you can drill down on those fields and it will take you to the detail. It will take you to the actual time entries for that client or the actual invoice and payment history for that client, that type of thing. Now, here at the top, we have notes. Not right now, I'm showing notes summary. This is a list of all the notes that I've stored in the system about conversations with the client. If I click in that field, I get a scroll bar here if I have more than will fit in the pane so I can scroll through those. If I want to add a new note, actually I can do it a couple of different ways. I can go to edit notes here or I can put my mouse in this pane and just double click it and it gets me into my edit notes screen. Now I can hit my new note and enter a new note for that client. And now when I enter a new note, it does get tagged. If I go back to note summary now, there's my new note that I just entered. It gets tagged with today's date and time as well as the ID of the staff that entered the note. Uh, there's a permanent note here. This is basically something that you always want to keep at the top of the list, so to speak, so that you can always quickly jump over to it for a referral. Uh, maybe you need a note here reminding you that you need to get the client to sign affidavits about income when you're doing tax work or something like that. To-dos and appointments lets me actually see any appointments or to-do items that I have set up on the calendar for the client on anybody's calendar in the system too here as well as too, I can add new ones or I can modify these right from here if I need to. You can also filter this so it will only show completed items, incomplete items, or all items. I'm going to come to history and this gives me kind of a quick look, if you will, at the time history for the client in the system. And I can actually see date, hours, amount. Uh, when I select one here, I can actually, you know, the text with it as well as the staff that worked on it and the work code it was recorded under. The analysis tab. Now this tab really gives me a good quick overview, if you will, of how good of a client is this. I can see here every work code that I've worked on for the client, the time at standard rates for each code, the net realized billing after any billing adjustments. So you know, here's my net time at standard, my billing, so I can see exactly you know, am I being able to write up or am I having to write down my time. As well as here at the right, you've got some historical averages, maximums, that type of thing, as well as an AR agent. Uh, you can select the year that you're looking at here so that you can compare one year to the next as well. And you can, if you check this box, it'll let you see this statistics for the group that this client is a member of. Now, that's the main screen here. Now, there are uh, more contact information. Here's the tab. And now here I can have... Um, some billing setup information. I've got some drop down fields here that again I can uh, select you know, who the tax lawyer is, who uh, the staff is handling different functions for the client. Also I can do a preferred bill type, sales tax rate if I do services that are subject to sales tax. There are some credit limits that I can set up here. These credit limits you can set up overall AR or WIP credit limits. And if a client hits an assigned credit limit, time entry gets blocked so the staff can enter time for them. And the partner in charge of the client gets a little pop-up notice on, in Imagine Time, letting them know that client, in this case all rise, roads, and tassels, has hit their credit limit so that he can address that issue, either get a payment into the system or get an invoice out to get the whip lowered, that type of thing. The leads email set up here, this is used for legal billing, and if you're doing leads billing, this is where you put the information that ties back to that. Here you also have a last email file number, some rate template, uh, it's optional if you have a rate template associated with the client, and also AlterTax ID if you're doing imports from AlterTax. Over here is some taxpayer information fields, uh, mailing list selections, and now here I can, again, in company setup, I can add multiple lists here. Each client can belong to any one or any combination of these lists. If I want to put this one on my newsletter, I just select that, double click, now he's on my newsletter list. I can generate mailing labels, listings. Again, if you have our calendar contact management module, you can do email blasts to these lists that you have set up here. Uh, up here, some user defined fields. Just as the name implies, you can actually change the naming of this when you're doing your company setup. And these are basically fields for anything that you want to store about a client that we don't already have a field for. A good example would be maybe you need a field here for their QuickBooks password. 
due date monitor, and this ties in directly with our due date monitor add M module. And for this individual client, this gives me a list of the due date items that I'm tracking for them. This will be covered in a lot more detail in the actual due date module of the training. Now, here's where I can set up simple fixed fee invoicing. Um, again, you can relabel these types, but like for this client, I've got him set up for a $500 monthly invoice in this case. Here's my revenue work code. I've got this set up to automatically clear any time entries for that work code when I generate the invoice. And I do have options there. I can do clear for a specific work code. I can do clear all time out of his whip if it's an all-inclusive arrangement. Or I can do don't clear slips, create basically a progress billing. If I want to create a progress bill allowance that I can come back and clear time against at a later date in the system. Here is my description that's going to get printed on the invoice. And again, this will get covered in more detail in the billing setup portion of the program. But I can use wild cards here for period and year so that I don't have to go in and modify each one of these each month in this case when I'm generating my invoices. Here's some options for the syncing with Outlook if you're using that. Also there's some filtering I can do here. I can actually filter if I, you know, for a client created between specific dates of clients that fall into specific fields on the options that I have set up. And I can actually filter our printed uh, list out of those clients. That is a pretty good overview there of the general options on this screen. Now I am going to jump back to that first screen. I did mention that I will come back to this group ID feature. As I said, you can tie clients together by a group ID here that have some sort of association. I can actually double click right here on the ID and this lets me see all my members of my group. Here's their ID, their name, their whip or unbilled time for each member of the group as a whole in the system. Also, their build or AR for each member in the group in the system. So a lot of good information there. Uh, you'll notice Castle Realty here, C-A-S-T-L is their client ID. That's the group ID I'm using, so they're considered to be the head of that group. And if I click the box back on this screen, group uses main address, all the members of that group's invoices and statements, although we'll generate a separate one for each entity, they will all be addressed to Castle Realty's address. Now two, there is an option here for client engagements. I can set up master engagements in the system and the big advantage of engagement is that it allows me to segregate time by the specific engagement it's related for. And I can click right here and can say yes here to update my time totals. And here are the engagement types that I have assigned to this particular client, the year, start and end dates if I have those assigned. Now here's a more detailed description of each one for each client. And over here you have budgeted hours and dollars and actual hours and dollars and billed and realized dollars. So it gives you some quick overview again of the totals. Now too, like for the review here, you'll notice at the bottom I've actually done a pretty detailed budget toward this engagement and I can actually track budgeted to actual as a work on the engagement or at the end of the engagement. And there is a quick jump here to jump over to engagement reporting. You can also access that from the setup work code and engagement uh, screen as well. But again, close that and I'm back to my client setup screen. Hello, this is Fred Lindsley with Imagine Time. I hope that's helpful. If you have any other questions, please give our tech support department a call. And thank you very much for using Imagine Time.